Okay, so welcome to everybody who's in the chat. Um, we are now on our shit. Is it ninth episode? I want to say ninth. Um, so we're on. We're that's what it's gonna be now. I'm gonna change the numbers if it's not. Um, but we're on our ninth episode. Um, last time was a bit of a sort of interlude kind of episode. Um, with uh, Griff and the gang uh, defeating Larith in the moat house, he went off to talk to Saint Fields to get his new orders. Uh, there's been some changes. He went up to Nulb to go uh, help uh, bring those uh, Druid acolytes down who were there, who were going to be part of this new effort to sort of protect the area, help out Hamlet, that sort of thing. As you know, there's a sort of a rising tide of evil in the area. Um, and outside of that, when you went to Nulb and came back, you couldn't shake this feeling. Um, and that feeling still hasn't fully gone yet. There's always still that feeling that something's watching you or keeping track on you um, after your, you know, pretty big defeat of uh, a powerful figure in the region. Um, but you and Alan on your way back uh, from the city uh, where you got your new orders to go into the temple, you were accosted by an assassin, um, which you guys quickly defeated and took care of. Um, and then um, you decided to make, yourself, make your way back to Helmut and then make your way all the way up to the temple. Uh, and that is where we are now. You are outside the temple here. Uh, to the left, you came from the road. Um, actually, no, sorry, you didn't come from the road. Uh, you went through the river uh, to try and avoid Nulb spotting you going to the temple, so you didn't want anybody following you. You didn't want any spies, perhaps, you know, mentioning where your uh, location is. And so now you are here. Uh, though you were uh, also attacked by Lizardmen, which you also handily defeated. Um, but we'll see how handy the defeats are today. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, so, Martin, uh, you're on the left here. Uh, once you get closer to the temple, if you do go there, you're welcome to you know search around this area if there's anything you want yeah. to do. Um, we will switch to a different map that's closer to it. Um, but uh, what you can tell right now, looking at the temple from where you are, as I described it last time, this place be real fucked up. It's, uh, you know, death everywhere. There's obviously signs of the battle that hit. Um... And looking across the temple, uh, you can see Alan. Alan's face is just like, he's just slack-jawed. Um, because it looks like across every, almost every inch of stone, uh, from the pillars to the bricks to the buttresses, um, there's just like gaping maws and faces of pain, and just almost as if the rock the temple is made of is evil itself. Um, and yeah, uh, they are all sort of looking at it, uh, looking around, um... You can see that Elmo and a few of the others have their weapons drawn, um, looking very wary of the situation. Um, but yeah, what would you like to do? So Griff is more than a little paranoid about this place. Um, so he's going to say to um, everybody, all, all eight of them, right, um, yeah, funny old looking place. Uh, you might believe it's haunted. But uh, I think we should check this place out. Look, and he, and he sort of points to the northeast. Those trees over there, I, th I think we'll head round the back and, um, yeah, we'll, we'll look at this thing from a distance. Just make sure there's uh, nothing unexpected and make sure there's enough distance between us and the temple, if there is. Sounds good. So you're gonna move. Uh, you're gonna move north. Like, are you going uh, like between the trees? Okay, you're on. You're running around the trees. Yeah. Okay. Not, sounds good. We're not quite sure what's going on there, so we're gonna go Perfect. north past the trees and just, right. just you know, we got all day. We'll have, have a look, look around. around. Absolutely. So uh, while you're there, I'll just because uh, obviously you see there's that B there. Um, so for anybody who's listening to this in the podcast Ooh. form, um, it looks like just north of the temple, um, there is. Uh, I'll uh, get off your character. Um, it looks like there's a big row of trees uh, that look gnarled um, and burnt. Um, I believe they were described last time as just looking very corrupted. Um, mm. But just north of those trees, to the north northwest, um, you see what looks like um, some sort of uh, collapsed... Uh, let me see here. Let me, let me find it real quick. Um, you see what looks like building ruins. Um, and I'll read out a little, little box text here for you. Um, as all of the raised works of the temple, the outlines of this place are discernible even though the whole is tumbled, burned, and broken. Broken bricks, bits of charred beams, and broken plaster are heaped in the shell of the lower story. Parts of a narrow outside stairway on the west side can be seen through the rubble. The stairs lead down to a, to a dark, small opening through which a person might crawl. Um, so what you see obviously here is this collapsed building in front of you. It does look like there might, there might be a way into the collapsed building, um, if you want to. 
Um, you would probably know as well that due to like having to crawl through it if you were to go in, um, perhaps some of your AC would not be um, added if you were attacked, just so you know, because your armor is not like necessarily in a good spot, your head's a little mm. exposed, that sort of thing. Um, so it is dangerous, as well as just the normal hazards of going... Uh, you know, spelunking yeah. into a <laughs> into a, into some ruins. Oh, it's tempting! It's tempting. So Griff will say, um, "Well, I think that might be an interesting thing to maybe look at later. Let's just make sure that if we go in there, there's nothing else that's going to come and I don't know, jump on us." It sounds good. So yeah. Gr- Griff's going to just take a careful look, but not sort of too close, and make sure there's nothing sort of twitching or yelling or moaning from it. Yeah, so looking, uh, just having a bit of a closer look, uh, there's no evidence of, like, any heavy traffic here. You yeah. don't see many, like, footprints or uh, any, you know, disturbed stuff like like beasts going through here or anything like that. Um, it just looks like an old collapsed building. Hmm. So we'll we'll continue on and uh, do a little circuit at the temple. Okay, yep, yeah, so you start heading hey. east. Um, and, excuse me. Um, so you start heading east, and you see there... Um, to the northeast here of the temple at the sort of... The temple has, uh, for yep. anybody listening, uh, the temple has its sort of main building, and then there is the old ruins of the big outer walls that were around it, uh, now all destroyed and crushed with both time and whatever hit it. But there is still uh, this tower in the northeast standing, but barely, as um, the two first stories, it's a three-story tower, the two first stories have collapsed in on itself, Um and what you see here um, is, uh, yeah, that's basically it. You see just that. Uh, one thing you do notice, however, is as you get closer towards it, um, there are about uh, a dozen big, fat ravens, um, probably the size of cats, um, start cawing loudly as you approach. <sighs> well, that was too easy. Um... Elmo, do you think you can take those down with an arrow? Barry? What do you reckon? Um, they, they, they look at each other and look back at you, know, like, uh, by my count, uh, sir, I think there's about, mm, at least 14 or 15 there. There's some more in the back. I, you know, and they're, uh, they got pretty sharp claws. Those, those aren't any, uh, you know, your, your standard raven. They look pretty big. I mean, we can yeah. definitely try and take some of them down, but, you know, this might, uh, be a bit of a fight, or at least draw quite a bit of attention. Yeah, that was what I was trying to avoid. I mean, it does look like somebody's early warning system, if you ask me. Um, yeah. Bugger. Oh, I'll tell you what, let's just go south a bit, and um, let's hope nobody notices. Sounds good. Yeah, so you, you keep heading south. Uh, you head past those yeah. trees that are lighting the north of the, of the tower. Uh, sorry, the north of the temple. Um, yeah, and as you guys depart that place, the, the, the ravens settle down quite a bit. They're not quite as uh, loud. Um, and you keep making your way south. Um, while you're making your way south, um, I will say that you notice just that they have a big, sort of a good, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A good kind of uh, recon of the whole area. You can tell that yeah. this temple is friggin' huge. Um, it's about 450 feet north to south. Um, and probably at its widest is probably another 450 feet. It's in this weird sort of formation where it looks like it's almost like a big, um, almost like an airplane a little bit there, where you have like two wings on the side. Um, and from there, from those wings, from the tip of the wing to the wing on the other side, that's about 450 feet across as well. Um, and at its highest, it's probably about 50 feet tall. So it's a very massive temple that you can tell moving past it. And like I said before, uh, all those horrified faces and, you know, sculptures of horrifying creatures. Uh, it is uh, a really, really unsettling uh, sight. Um, <laughs> and you make your way south. And overall, it seems like down in the south here, you can keep moving your way down there. Uh, it looks like it's pretty much um, just more destroyed wall. Uh, lots of more uh, gross grass and mud. Uh, there is a road leading south uh, that goes sort of probably around back onto the, like the road towards uh, Nulb and that sort of thing, or going off to another direction. Uh, it looks like just a lot of traffic over time has just created that you know sort of yep. road. Um, but yeah, outside of that, it seems pretty. Uh, it seems pretty uneventful down here, at least. I noticed there's a little sea on the map that we're quite close to. Is that anything to worry about? Oh yes, thank you. Um, oh, that, that, that's the temple itself. That's just. Uh, Let's go. 
Um, yeah, interesting. So Griff is going to say to everybody, well, I mean, it seems pretty quiet. I'm a little bit annoyed. Uh, uh, oh, what's the word? Oh, I don't know. It's been a, been a long night. Too much brandy again. Um, I don't know. This is, this is a lot of traffic. It's off-putting, unnerving. That's the word I was looking for. Um, it certainly seems busy here. But uh, Yeah, one yeah. thing I'll say, too, as you're saying that, uh, you guys uh, chatting, you can see that the giant, giant double doors that lead into the temple, uh, these ones here, they're probably about... Uh, each door is probably about 10 feet across. Like, they're big doors, and they are uh, not quite wide open, um, but they have looked like they've been sort of pushed open. Well, what do you reckon, Elmo? Do you think we should check out that building and that tower? Do you think, I don't know, one of those things, really, if you yeah, take care of the small things, sometimes the, the, the bigger things are a bit easier. Well, what, what do you reckon? Uh, he says, uh, well, I mean, boss, uh, I mean, you're the one who makes the choices around here, but, uh, you know, I, I could see it going either way. I don't know if we want people, you know, coming up behind us, but at the same time, if, uh, if those ravens were some sort of alarm system, going into a tower, mm. if they're ready for us, might be a, you know, might be a death sense. Yeah. Might be easier to draw them out, if anything, but, uh, well, it's up to I you, know. boss. Well, I'll tell you what, why don't, why don't we check out that building? Um, yeah, I've, I've got a feeling about that one. All right, I works. think you're right about the Ravens, though. Works for me. Um, yep, yeah. uh, so you guys are going to head back north up towards the, the building there, the class building uh, to the northwest yep. of the temple. Yep, yeah, sounds good. Yeah, so you make your way all the way up there. Um, and uh, what do you want to do? Um, so Griff is going to don his cloak of elven kind and, um, Put a shield to one side, and he'll say, well, "I'm just going to take a quick look down there." Um, so, how how easy is it to get down? Are there like stairs, sort of in the brickwork, to get down, or is it more of a being lowered on a rope thing? Uh, no, it's it's there's stairs that can lead down almost like into a cellar. Uh, you can you yeah. can go you can go down there. It just looks like most of like the main floors have sort of collapsed, so you are like yeah. bent over going in, and then you're probably going to get on your hands and knees as you get to the bottom of it to sort of check out the tunnel. Um, so Griff will say to Elmo, look, um, I'll tie this rope on if you can keep a, a hand on that one. Never know, his wood might go. It'll be handy to have somebody to pull me out. Absolutely. Um, and Good then, good. uh, yeah, so he does that and then he orders, um, Kesa and Nina and Lee to keep an eye out, sort of just do a fan out a little yeah. bit and just keep a post. Um, and, uh, yep. Yeah. Um, so you start hand down. Was there anything else you want to do, Martin, first? Nope. Sorry, just keeping up with my notes there. No, that's all good. So, um, yeah, Griff will crawl slowly down the stairs. Okay. So you start going down the stairs, um, and it looks like um, okay. you get down, and it looks like when you get to the bottom, um, there is still – you can see the door leading into whatever the cellar was for this for – this, um, uh, this building it looks a little bit rotted and it looks like it's been collapsed on a little bit it looks like you probably could push it um but it just looks like it's quite a bit damaged so um you can still see your way above you you probably have gone down about like 12 steps um and now you're sort of on your hands and knees in front of this door in front of you mm. um griff will just put his ear to the door very 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 gently and see if he can hear anything yep uh yeah give me um a notice check There we go. Eight. Hey, nice. Um, yeah, you hear the faint sounds of skittering inside. Hmm. Like something's scratching at the stone. Yeah. So how easy would it be to get other people down here? Or is it sort of one at a time? Um, it would definitely be, I mean, it would definitely be almost like a little conga line of people on their hands and knees. Uh, you could definitely not yeah. fit more than one person in a row. Uh, you could get people behind you. Um, and at the same time, you would also just know Griffin know this just from the other surrounding. Yeah. If anything happens, you're trying to escape, that will also slow you down as you'll have to wait for the person behind you to go first and then you can yeah. go. So, um, yeah, you can get people down here, but it's going to be, you know, slow and single file. So, question on the on the so the door's rotting and it's not doing too well. Is there anything that 
he could sort of maybe tie a rope to on the door. Maybe there's a door handle or something. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Cool. Yeah, there's a door so handle there. Griff will un untie the rope from his waist, tie it onto the door handle. Mm -hmm. And assuming nothing bad happens, um, he will crawl slowly back up the stairs. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, anything else happens? Here, um, Elmo, Barry, there's, um, there's something down there. I don't know what it is, but there's this sort of weird skittering noise. Um, I've tied the rope off to the door. Um, you get ready with your bits, bow and arrow and all that, and uh, I'm going to give it a tug, yeah? All right, yeah, that works. So, um, he's with shield in one hand mm -hmm. and bow and arrow ready on his back, or bow ready at least. He's yeah. going to give the, the thing a good sharp tug and hope the door goes. Yep, sounds good. Um, so give me, um, unless you want help from anybody, give me a, uh, uh, give me an exert check. Yeah. Uh, the DC is eight because uh, it is pretty stuck. Did you want to reroll yeah. that? Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Did you want anybody to help you? By the way, on this reroll. Oh, there we go. Perfect. All right, we're good. <laughs> yeah. So uh, with you, at first you pull and you feel like a little tugging, um, and it doesn't really move, and then you give it a really good yank, um, and the door kind of collapses a bit, but does open. Uh, you hear um the sort of collapsing rock as like um bits and pieces sort of fall off of it. Um, but now the door is open. It's not fully open, but it's just enough to let probably somebody in. Yeah. Um, in the room, it is very dark, so you can't really see inside from where you are. Um, is there anything you want to do to try and see more? Um, yeah, Griff will spark up a torch and throw one down the stairs, being yeah. careful to miss the stairs. Sounds good. Yeah, so you throw it, and it goes down, uh, sails straight uh, behind the door. Um, and sort of sparks on the ground there, uh, but does it almost for a second there? You're sort of uh, worried, it, you know, it flickers out, but then it relights properly, um, and you do see what looks like um, sort of dark furry forms um, skittering away. You hear like a little screech. Um, it looks like probably uh, you know creatures the size of like um, I don't mm. know, probably the size of like a small dog, uh, sort of skittering away from the fire um, into the corners um, where you can't really see them anymore. Right. Um, um, and I will also say that your torch... Um, uh, yeah, your torch doesn't bounce off of anything necessarily shiny, um, but you do see what looks like several kegs of uh, you know ooh. pottery and stuff uh, down there. Uh, little different pieces of pottery and urns, that sort of thing. Oh, what do you reckon then, guys? That looks like that could be something, um, oh, I don't know, but interesting down there. Yeah, El Emil agrees. He says, uh, yeah, but, I mean, we're not going to be able to really fight easily down there. Is there anything? Uh... No. Um, so do we know, as we've sort of come to the Templars, has it been sort of a forest full of rabbits and deer, or has it been fairly kind of quiet for livestock? Um, I would say as you've gotten closer to the temple, um, the sounds of birds chirping has sort of uh, left. I would say probably mm -hmm. the calling of stuff like crows and ravens has probably increased. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and maybe the sounds of frogs and that sort of thing. But overall, it seems like a lot of the wildlife has kind of done away yeah. the closer you get to the temple. And and even, like, in the environment itself, like, the really nice lush trees and green grasses start to fly away to uh, yellowed grasses <laughs> and, you know, uh, really gnarled trees. So do our, any of our rations have anything that's sort of tasty in there? Is it all dried stuff? That's all dried stuff, but I'd say a lot of it could be yeah. seen as tasty. You know, like, you got, like, raisins, apricots. Um, yeah, you know, maybe some dried pieces of jerky, that sort of thing. Yeah, so Griff is going to try and, I don't know, just get a small amount of jerky. And uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be edible, right? So he's going to get a small amount of jerky, try and wet it up a bit and, um, you know, try and make it come alive and then put it in a bit of cloth bag. Again, you know, they've only got to smell it, right? Mm -hmm. um, tie it to the end of the rope and then throw it down on the rope. So you've got this little bag of um, goodies that's just <laughs> launched to the bottom of the stairs. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the bag just sort of whoomp, hits the ground there. Um, and for for a little while, nothing happens. It seems like both the throwing it out mm. and the fire still kind of going from the torch uh, has scared anything away. Um, but soon you see kind of crawling out of the walls in the tunnels. Um, you see about two or three giant rats uh, come out of the walls there um, and start to go towards the bag. You see one start to tear at it. Um, and the other two start to approach it. Yeah, so Griff will pull the bag up the stairs slowly and uh, just signal to Elmo and Bari mm -hmm. to go and shoot it. Sounds good, yep. 
Um, so one, when it moves, uh, jumps back um, and runs back into the wall and sort of scurries inside. The other two, um, now getting the bag a little bit open, have started to go after it. And as you start dragging mm-hmm. it up, um, they continue to go after it. Um, and then we'll do. Uh, you said who do you want, Elmo and Bari, to fire off? Yeah, yeah. Do you want one? Do you want one to fire one on each of the rats, or? Uh... Yeah, we'll go for one on each. Okay, sounds good. So Elmo fires off at one rat, and Bari fires off Ooh. at another rat. Um, Elmo, um, do you want Elmo to re-roll that? Uh, yeah, he can, can't he? Because he's a yeah. warrior. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. So he'll. Oh no, he doesn't rule. He just uh, hits. He just makes it a hit. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Jesus Christ! So eight and nine damage on both. Um, <laughs> both of those uh, rats are immediately shish kebobbed. Arrows yeah. right down their gullets, uh, and they just die uh, right on the steps there. Um, lots of blood comes out of them, starting to make the uh, the stairs a little bit slick with their little mm. rat blood. Um, and their bodies are obstructing the place a little bit because they are pretty big. Like I said, they're probably the size of like small dogs. So yeah, they're uh, not small. <laughs> so Griff is also hoping that the dead rats uh, are going to be uh, an appealing, tasty, meaty treat to the other rats because I don't mm-hmm. think rats are too picky about what they eat. No, no. Um, so we'll say um, as uh, it, it takes a little time. A little time is going by here. I uh, will say another scene goes by basically as you guys sort of wait mm-hmm. around. Um, and eventually you see about four or five more uh, come up to the rats um, and start digging into both the bag and starting to, uh, well, not to get too graphic, but things get pretty uh, pretty nature-y uh, in the stairwell. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Cannibalistic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. So, uh, um, again, Griff will sort of point at everybody and go, eh, arrows. Sounds good. Uh, I can't remember who else. Have we got... Um, is it Lee or Berg that can... Uh, Lee has the crossbow. crossbow. Kesa and Nina Lee. have uh, bows as well. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to go for a full-on assault on the rats. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. I'll say Elmo, Bari, and Lee can make it around. Uh, Alan will back off, and I'll say Kesa can yeah. get in there as well. Because um, you guys are like sort of surrounding. You guys are all trying to be quiet as much as you can. Um, so... And you're also firing off, I'm assuming? Yeah. That's okay. probably a miss. 15? Uh, no, 15 hits. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah, they're just rats. Uh, and that kills one. Um, Lee will fire off her bolt. Also a hit. Kills another one. Um, Queso will fire off. Ooh. Bari will fire off. Another two hits. I think that was everybody. Um, and yeah, that's all the rats dead as like just a bunch of bolts and arrows just fly down the stairwell and just hit the ones that are dead. Um, and I'll just say for expediency, um, this, you start to clean up the stuff a little bit, but the blood and dead rats and food on the, on the uh, stairwell here does attract more rats and you guys very much like fish like a barrel, uh, just sort of clean them up. Okay. Um, but yeah. So with that, you uh, you guys sort of keep doing that. Uh, it is a little bit gruesome. The smell is now starting to hit you from all these. There's just this <laughs> mound of dead rat that's just there uh, on the stairwell. It's uh, a very unpleasant sight. Anybody fancy barbecue? Uh, Alan's like, no, I'm 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 good, sir. I got I, I got my rations here. Yep. Yeah, okay. Well, I wasn't serious, by the way, but um... <laughs> right. Uh... Okay, well let's um let's hoik these rat bodies up the uh, the top of the stairs. I know it's a bit of a mucky business, but we've got to get down there, I think. And um, well, you know what? I reckon those ravens might be a bit hungry. Maybe we can um, I don't know, take them over there later. Mm-hmm. But for now, and uh, yeah, so Griff's gonna gonna head down the stairs carefully and slowly. Yep. But yeah, yep. Yeah. Everybody's sort of like by the arrow tips or by the arrow like feather parts. They take that to just sort of lift the bodies up, yeah. just start chucking them out of the stairwell. Um, you do feel, unfortunately, sort of warm blood kind of touch like your pants as you have to get down on your knees as you go through it, and it's just un, you know, very unseemly. But uh, you get into this little room. It looks like a cellar, um, and yeah. Uh, so you see in here, um, it's a very short. Like you can't stand in this room. Um, 
even if it wasn't collapsed, this is the cellar was mm. you know made for for halflings <laughs> or something. Um, and you see dozens of barrels and racks of earthenware flasks. Um, and yeah, you're able to go through it. Uh, did you did you order anybody to come down here with you to help you with this stuff at all, or are you just going down here by yourself? Uh, yeah, Alan, Alan can come down and help. Okay, yeah, Alan, Alan looks through stuff. Um, he's obviously doesn't have the eye for this stuff, but you do. Um, and I'll just say, roll me a d6, uh, Martin. Okay. Okay. Um, so, you can tell uh, that there are um, what looks like uh, basically a bunch of barreled wine um, here that's not really worth much. Uh, it's probably best just drunk, if anything, or given to given out to people for free. You know, maybe to your to your hirelings for yeah. morale reasons. Um, but there are sixty eight stoneware containers that all hold a pretty decent wine. Uh, you would get probably one GP um, for selling each of them uh, by themselves. But if you sold the whole thing, you could probably get uh, three. Oh, sorry, I should say one silver piece. Uh, but you could get three silver pieces um, if like it's all sold off at once per thing. Yeah, if you're able to do a nice big sale. Um, Obviously, this is the sort of thing where if you're going to do that, this is not necessarily the best time to grab these as, you know, this, right. this will take up all your encumbrance <laughs> pretty much. Um, yeah. And um, let's see here. And also, the probably the, the, you know, the prize here is you find a very nice keg of ancient brandy. Um, uh. And that will probably fetch you a nice, uh, probably 400 silver in Hamlet. Good God. Yeah, it looks real good. <laughs> um, you probably maybe like recognize the vintage just from a long time ago. Maybe it's one that doesn't exist anymore. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, it is, it is the good stuff. Well, yeah, I think we should leave this here for now, Alan. I don't think there's any point in trying to drag this around with us, but, um, yeah. And, uh, he's going to hide the, uh, the, the ancient brandy behind some yep. of the other things. If anyone comes looking and, uh, I will say, Marcus, you know, the, find it. that brandy is like in a keg that you could probably put on the horses if you want to. That one you could probably store without too much trouble, okay. but the rest yeah. is more like, it's like, you're probably going to want to plan yeah. out 68 stoneware ones but yeah but this one keg you can, you can probably put yeah. on a horse without so much trouble we will grab that one and stick it on the horse then in that case sounds good you guys have so many horses that sort of stuff's not too much of yeah. trouble um, <laughs> it's more when you guys are going through the dungeons where you're sort of grabbing stuff where it'll become an encumbrance will become a serious yeah. serious issue um but yeah that sounds good and that's pretty much everything you find in here. You don't really see it any other way into this building it looks like it, it was mostly just this cellar yeah. left well Oh, that wasn't too bad, was it? Um, hey, look, uh, I, I, I'm not really that fussed about the wine, guys. If anyone wants that, they're more than uh, welcome to, to grab us on, on our way out. Works for yeah. me, boss. Not a problem, not a problem. Um, uh, my Griff is conflicted at this point. He doesn't know whether to mess with the crows or... or <laughs> if they are an early warning system, then we should probably leave them alone, but... I don't know. If there's something in the tower, maybe we should get the thing in the tower. <laughs> uh, so Griff is going to, I don't know, look at the sky and think, hmm, he's going to look for a sign. Um, so I'm going to roll 1d6. <laughs> and Griff thinks, yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm looking at those clouds and um, I swear there's almost like a, you can see it if you look hard enough. There's like an <laughs> arrow pointing towards that tower. So... <laughs> I know those crows are there, but I think we should check it out. And so he does. <laughs> All right, sounds good. <laughs> um, yep, yeah, you guys, you guys approach just sort of slowly. I mean, are you guys on your horses, or would you be off your horses at this point? Would you think? I think, I think we'll be off the horses, and we'll sort of trailing them. Drag, drag a couple of rats with us. In fact, we might actually tie the um, with a bit of rope. We could tie a couple of rats to the back of the horses. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Enough to, yeah. yeah, you got, you guys make your way over to that tower. Um, and I will say, uh, this is all to the audience too, um, I'm really bad at keeping track of stuff, like time and everything else. I'll say that right now to you guys. Um, I will say it is about half a day here from Hamlet, and it's probably been from waiting around doing all the rat stuff. It's probably been about an hour. So we're probably going to say you're at around like um, 1 p.m. or so in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, so you still have lots of time to adventure and all that sort of stuff. Just keep in mind that... Um, Depending on where you want to go, you might be traveling at night, which you would know is more dangerous. So you might yep. find a place to hunker down. Just, just giving that, just running you that sort of stuff. But yeah, so yeah. you guys uh, head over to the tower. Um, rats in tow and horses in tow. Um, and you see those 16 crows are still there. And as you approach, they start calling out loudly again. 
Right, let's um, let's unhitch these rats and uh, just just back off a little bit, see if they're interested. Mm-hmm. So we'll we'll literally just sort of dump the rats in front of the tower and then back off a little bit. Yep. So you um you get closer and then you throw the rats onto the ground there and you back off, giving them a bit of a wide berth. And you see them like their eyes sort of like they cock their heads. You see their eyes looking straight at you, and then you also see them like looking at the rats. You know you know for sure they notice them. Um, mm. but you also notice that they seem to not do anything about it. Um, they Ooh. seem to just stay up there. Um, they don't go for the rats. Interesting. Uh. Hmm. So how would we get into the tower then? There's a. You said the first two floors are collapsed. Yeah, there is a door in front of you. Um, it yep. looks like from your sort of general look at the tower, it's probably the only way inside. So Griffle do his listen at doors thing again. Okay. Um. Yeah, give me uh, give me your notice check. There we go. We have. Ooh. Nice. nice. That's a really good roll. Okay. This is what you hear. Um, it is very faint, but you are sort of you sort of maybe hold your sort of harpy in your breath just so there's almost as little noise as possible. You wait for the wind to sort of die down as much as possible, and then you sort of give a good listen. Just try and checking, putting your uh your ear up to the different stone and the door and everything else. Um, and you can faintly hear the sounds of, like, ragged breathing and footsteps on the other side of the door. And when I say ragged breathing, I don't mean, like, somebody's, like, dying or coughing. More just that, like, it's somebody who's, um, you know, definitely you can hear them heavily breathing, sort of, like, they're not far away from the door at all. Um, yeah. Yeah. And does the door, this is a weird question, does the door look like it's kind of shut? Maybe it's a bit ajar? Or... Uh, it's, it's fully shut. Fully shut. Okay. Um, and how would he open the do- sorry door mechanics here? How would he open the door? Is it something that he'd have to pull? The down door would swing it? inwards. You'd have to swing open inward. it. And it would okay. swing inwards. Yeah. Yeah. And how would he open the door? Is it like a a handle on it or? Uh, let me see here. I'm just wondering how we can do this kind of from a distance, or whether we can. Um... Pull. Oh, it looks like uh, one heavy door can be seen barred and chained shut from the outside. Um, okay. Arrow slits are visible on either side of the door, but peering in reveals only blackness beyond. Hmm. So Griff will quietly um, say to everybody else, oh, I've got a bit of a plan here. Um, look, why don't you guys just um, hide in the trees there? And he's going to sort of point to the trees around that area. Mm-hmm. And uh, he'll say, I'll, I'll keep the arrows trained on the door, but I've got an idea. Okay. Um, and Griff is going to grab... Can he grab two of the rats? Um, one in each hand, one tail in each hand? Yep. Yeah, he's going to chuck them over his shoulder, mm-hmm. um, walk up to the door, and bang on the door. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, you uh, you bang on the door, um, and uh, you don't you don't hear anything. Nobody answers. Nobody opens the door. Uh, you bang on it, and then you are just greeted by silence and the uh, cawing of crow or ravens above you. Yeah, rats. Anybody for rats? Fresh rats for sale. One silver piece for a rat. And are you right in front of the door? Yeah, and he's going to bang on the door again. Okay. Rats for sale. Um. So what you notice is that it looks like this chain and lock. Um, is obviously not designed the way you thought it was because you see it latch open from whoever's inside uh, and the door swings open. Can you give me... um, Give me an... uh, Let's see here. Uh, Would it be evasion? Yeah, give me an evasion save um, as the door swings out about to slam straight into you. Oh, okay. Fail. So... um, and your your group is just here behind the trees, right? Yeah. So, um, you are slammed backwards and you are knocked prone onto your onto your back. Um, and in front of you, 
Um, you see a mass of men and women with spears, crossbows, armor, um, and they rush out towards you. So we're going to go into combat here. <laughs> That's not what I expected. <laughs> uh, so give me, uh, give me, give me your initiative. <laughs> Poor Griff. Nobody oh, wanted Jesus to Christ. Oh, oh no. my God. I well, thought it was me. I thought it was my eight. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Oh, no. This might be uh, the end of old Griff here. So, um, you were on the ground. Um, it looks like there's a sort of front rank of uh, footmen in ring mail, um, and they have uh, spears. Um, from them being able to have to sort of filter through the door, um, only four of them can actually reach you right now, um, but you can see that there's four more behind them, and a lot more people behind them. This is like a clown car tower of just soldiers. <laughs> what? Um, so, what is this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, Ori, thank you for the uh, free reroll there. Uh, so thank you. That is. <laughs> um, Jesus. So, uh, these are going to be the first guys here who are all going to attack you. Um, you know what? We're just going to do all four rolls. As they spear down, um, they'll have a little bonus because you're prone. Yep. Um, you do have a high AC, though. Oh, my God. They can't Ooh. hit for shit. Yeah, so you... I imagine uh. almost like you are sort of backing up on the ground, and every spear is, like, going, like, in between your thighs, like, into the ground, or, like, right yeah. next to your neck. But they can't seem to get a hit into you. Um... And then you see sort of filter out to the sides um, are some crossbow men. Um, and they will fire off their crossbows at you as well. Um, as these guys are also sort of trying to get into what looks like a formation. So they're not able to all get you, but these ones are yep. going to fire off their shots. <laughs> um, so you're going to take four more crossbow shots straight at you. Um, and that's, uh, what, that's two hits? <laughs> two hit, yep. Okay. Um, so you are going to take... Um, let's see here. Uh, doo, doo, doo. Oh, what on earth okay. are all these things doing in the tower? Okay, this looks like at least they're hand crossbows, so you are going to take 2d6. Uh, so you're going to take 9 damage. Jeez. Okay, we're not dead yet. This is good. Okay, sounds good. Um, so, <laughs> so it is now your turn, um, as this clown car keeps getting, getting out into formation, you see them sort of closing ranks and breaking, break, making this sort of, sort of phalanx of, uh, guys yeah. to protect the archers. And you're, you're hearing what looks like probably lieutenants barking out orders. <laughs> PT, Wait, thank lieutenants. you for, <laughs> PT gave 200, Jeez. so you can use that for a oh, full heal you. or a free reroll. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and one thing you're seeing on their armor, at least on the ones that look like they're of higher, you know, um, higher rank, you're seeing similar symbols of, like, the eye, um, but some of them have what looks like a fire symbol. Some looks like more like a water version. Um, it looks like some okay. sort of guard here. Uh, but, yeah, now it is your turn, Martin. Hmm. <laughs> um, Griff is going to run for the trees. Okay. Um, um, sounds good. Is it <laughs> is it possible to use the bits for the heal kind of now? Or yeah, absolutely. Action? You can use it whenever. Yeah, yeah. The the bits are almost a, cool. a meta. We've added a meta yeah. currency to the game. So, yeah. It's <laughs> 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 him saying standard fight. <laughs> cool. So, yeah, let's let's run for the trees and wind up. The, so, that's just a full heal, is it? Yeah, you just, you're, just back, oh. you're just back to, back to the top. Okay. Thank you, PT. That's probably essential. <laughs> um. Uh, and Griff's just going to say, oh, I, I don't know where they've come from. <laughs> Quick! <laughs> and um, uh, he's going to ask Naomi to cast Web in some sort of... No, no, web! Web! Yeah. Sort of, uh, yeah. <laughs> it sounds good. Yeah, almost uh, almost in sort of like a mirrored fashion to them, um, you see uh, Elmo, Allen, and Berg uh, sort of take the front rank uh, and sort of try and close the distance between you. As you run, they sort of try and move forward so you get behind them. Um, and then you have Kesa, Nina, uh, and Lee, and Bari behind them. And so Naomi uh, fires off her web spell. Um, and so um, so that's used up. And I'll just quickly grab that web spell. I believe yep. it's in here. Web, web, web. Uh, page 27. Okay. Um, let's see here. 
So, entangling creatures caught within... Blocking a 10-foot cube area. Okay, sweet. Uh, creatures caught within the web become entangled among the gluey fibers. Entangled creatures can move, but can break free depending on their strength. Um, okay, let's see here. Um, okay, so I don't think there's a save. I think they just get it, and then they can try and break out of it, if I'm not mistaken. Nice. Uh, yeah. So, who, okay, so I'll, I'll, now that you have sort of a chance to see, and Naomi's the one casting it, um, what you can see here that are out of the tower, because you still hear people yelling orders from inside, you can see what look like the eight footmen, uh, like, probably, like, the most basic unit that moved out into sort of, like, this phalanx, this, uh, uh two rows deep. Behind them are yep. four crossbows, um, as well as four archers, um, and you see what looks like, um more guards inside so do you want to target the archers or do you want to target the footmen because their ones are too far out of the spell the ones that are inside the tower yeah. still um so i think the best thing to do is for whatever else we do is to target the area around the door so if anyone else tries to come out they're going to get hit by the web so that's so you're going to try and but... make sure the people can stay inside is your is your goal yeah so okay. we'll, so if you if you if we've got like a 10 foot cube sort of area mm -hmm. um we'll cast it so that the back of the cube is against the door so anybody trying to come through is going to get hit Sounds and then we're going to try and get as many people with a 10 foot from the door to the okay. you know towards the trees uh in Perfect. that cube so yeah yeah so i'll say that they obviously have drilled and they know what they're doing mm. so they they move they moved out like in perfect yeah. precision against you um <laughs> so what i'll say is most of them are out of the way um but you'll build a web two archers that are just uh filing yeah. out as you do it so you basically completely block up the entrance full of the web spell um as it's just released um you see the scroll in Naomi's hand sort of turn into goo and just yeah. shoot over towards the door um, and it just blocks it off completely, at least for now. Um, and you hear what sounds like probably when the leader's been like, cut that down, we need to get through. And uh, two archers get caught up in the web, um, and you see them trying to untangle themselves. Uh, the yeah. rest sort of keep moving forward. Now, they haven't moved up on you. They seem to just sort of have gone into a defensive position just outside the tower, and they've sort of stayed there. Um, okay, so what do you want to do now, Martin? What's the next... Uh... Uh, so I think... Oh dear! What are we gonna? What are we gonna do? Griff or oh shit! Oh, we've been sent from Nob. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say there's too much chaos right now, and you yelling out stuff. They seem to be totally yeah. unaware to uh, go. Like they, they seem. This is. They seem. They are. They're already engaged in dealing with you, no matter who you are at this point. I would say. So anybody that can fire any long range weapons, so that's going to be pretty much everybody. Um, not Alan, not Berg, I think. Yeah. Um, so we're going to go all out with the bows on all right. the the footman. Sounds good. So yeah, so Elmo will just drop his axe for now and pull yeah. out his bow, um, and oh, everybody cool. will fire off their bows. Come on, we need some good rolls. Need some good. Not that. Not a five. <laughs> <laughs> Bow large. Well, that's a good hit. Bow large. Uh, Naomi, you're not doing anything. Berg, nice. fire off your crossbow. Um, Some good rolls. Bari's firing off that. Ooh, that's not and great. Elmo's firing off that. I believe. I believe Bari does. Can he re-roll his bows? Because he's a half expert, half a warrior. Yeah. Um, No, he doesn't have that because he's multi-classed. Okay, cool. No, he can't. Um, but everybody else can. Um, if or sorry, Elmo can. So Elmo hits. Um, Bari, I don't think is going to hit. No, no, he's not. Nope. Um. Do do do. Uh, she hits. Kesa hits, and Nina hits. So that is four. Two okay. Uh you see two of the footmen uh go down as they're riddled bullets or Ooh. not bolts, uh bolts and uh arrows. Um so you see two of them go down, there's six left, um, and they sort of close formation as the two die. Um and yeah. Um so that's all them. Uh and they're sort of they seem to be without with you sort of causing chaos in their ranks, they don't they're not moving forward on you guys or anything like that. Um but I believe that is your turn. Um Yep, Assuming you don't want good. Alan to run up alone. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> um, so just to draw it out a little bit here, because the way I see it is you're sort of over here, just like right yep. like at the cusp of the trees. 
Um, and yeah. they're just like, oh wait, oops. They're just like right here. Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, it's back to their turn. Uh, the footmen, uh, stay there, um, and they are going to, I believe, um, just to grab the world's not number combat rules. Um, I'm just going to see. Do, do, do. Cause they're probably going to try and get their AC up. Um, okay. Yep. Uh, do, 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 do. Using tool defense, cause remain action for the round. Um, game plus two bonus to armor class. Okay, yeah. So all all the um all the footmen are going to use total defense as their action, um, and they're gonna get their shields up, and they just sort of uh, make a very strong formation. Um, and it looks like um the ones in the back of the tower are starting to try and cut through the web. Okay. Um, they haven't cut through yet. Um, but I believe where is it? I'm using like three different books. <laughs> <laughs> of all different size, too. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, let's see here. Web is... Yeah. Okay, yeah. So they're probably not... They're not going to cut through it just yet. Um, they're probably cutting through sort of half it. It might be another round or two before they kind of get through. And even then, yeah. that, that's just cutting through the door. There's still the stuff um, out mm. front. So it's going to be a little while before the guys inside can get out. Um, however... Um, uh, do, 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 for the archers, um, hmm. Okay, um, for the archers, um, you see what looks like the other archers and crossbowmen, uh, for their actions, uh, take out daggers and short swords and start hacking away at the web that has the two, um, the two archers caught. Some of them burn torches into the webs. Um, yeah, um, they, those archers will probably be free next round as they are sort of cut away, uh, to be yeah. freed, but they will not be firing off this turn. Um, but all together they're able to sort of get themselves out and then get themselves back in formation. Um, so now it's back to you, Martin. Um, you are going to be dealing with, uh, the six footmen who are here, who are still waiting. And then you also have the eight, um, uh, ranged units who will be firing oh. off this next turn. So what do you want to do? Uh, panic. <laughs> <be> <laughs> <laughs> so we've got two so far if we'd have taken a few more down i'd have been a little happier but um what are we using for the spells here we're we using the basic uh basic yeah i'm mission? using i'm using the old school essentials spells okay cool yeah. let me just have a quick look there i think we're going to need something absolutely horrendous to, to make this work yeah so she has lightning bolt um yeah. <laughs> which is pretty good let me just see what that one does she has magic missile as well um, there's also Bless, which you can put on, which I think will give you guys bonuses. Um, yeah. Let's see here. Um, it's a 1D... Lightning Bolt oh, no. is on page 29. Cool. Oh, yes. So Lightning Bolt, uh, powerful circle of electricity, energy, 60 feet long and 5 feet wide is conjured. Um, creature caught Lightning Bolt suffers 1D6 damage for a level of the caster. With a successful save, she'll count as a level 1 caster for this, um, just because she's just yep. one down. Um... Yeah, so she can cut through, um, at most, probably three people with it. Okay. And I... save versus spell. So, yeah, they can also do a save to try and take half damage, but yeah. Yeah. So, Naomi's going to cast Lightning Bolt, then, in that case, and everyone else is going to be firing off arrows, other than Alan, of course. Okay. He's um, probably going to have to keep one, one hand on his shoulder to stop him from tearing forward. Sounds good. Um... Yeah, I'm trying to think here. So that'd be yeah, you can get four people. Cool. Okay. Um actually I wonder. Naomi says that uh it's a little bit risky, boss, but if you want if I if I run out to the side there, I can probably get six of them if I go diagonal. Um but you see like where she's pointing where she's gonna have to go, she's gonna be basically putting herself out in the open. Um. Yeah. Very susceptible to to shots, but she might be able to get four footmen and two of the range guys. Um, just going diagonal instead of just four down the line. But if she goes four down the line, she's more protected and she won't be targeted as much. Um. Well, look. I mean, take it easy. Make sure you don't get hit, and you run straight back. But I, I think that's a good idea. Okay. Yeah. So she's going to use her whole movement to get to that sort of side where she's sort of flanking around, and then she fires it off. Um. <laughs> 
All right. Well, let's hope it's not the end of Naomi. Um, yeah. And so uh, I will do the saves for these guys. So this is going to be the first uh, four, um, first four dudes. Uh, they don't have very good saves, so that's good. Um, only one save, so it's going to take half damage. And then this is going to be the two archers. Uh, one save, so they take half damage. Um, okay. So. That's the first one. Um, he's going to be fine. This is yep. the second guy. Fine. Oh, come on. <laughs> Third ones. guy. That he's yeah. dead. Um, and then the other guy's dead. Uh, oh, wait, no, he takes half damage. Um, so uh, yep. he will be fine, but pretty hurt. Um, just one second, I just gotta keep track of these guys. Um, so five, uh, so now there's five footmen left, I believe. All right, and then this is for uh, two of the archers. Ooh. Ooh. And then... Okay. Uh, let's see here. Ooh, nice. Okay. Um, so those two archers immediately get themselves free, and you see Naomi run to the side and just sort of fire off a lightning bolt that sort of blinds you a bit, almost like a, you never, ever, if you ever looked at like an acetylene torch uh, straight on, just fires out of her hands. Um, and you see a few guys drop, and you see the two archers as they get themselves free, and better ready to just fire off their bows, they immediately get struck down by the lightning. Um, nice. Alrighty then. So uh, there are five footmen left. My calculations are yep. correct here, um, and there are six ranged troops left. Yeah. So we've got four crossbow, two archers, and three of the guys who are three of the footmen are hurt. Yeah. Cool. That's good news. So uh, everyone else is going to fire off some arrows, and we're going to go for the. Da, 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 da. We're gonna go for. What are we gonna do? I think we're gonna go for the ranged guys. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, they are less protected. Um, they are, and the footmen aren't on us at the minute. So yeah. Okay, so you want all the range to go after the. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Let's go for those guys. For... Ooh, Ooh, good hit there. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's one. That's one dead crossbowman. Uh. And then, um, okay, so Elmo's going to fire off his bow. Come on. Bari's going to fire... Oh. Uh, uh, he can re-roll that if you want him to, or he can yeah. just hit if you want him to. That'll be good. <laughs> okay, um, so he's just going to hit. Um, he's going to do four damage, which doesn't kill one, but we'll see Bari will go after Ooh. the one that he did, uh, and that will kill him. Ooh. That'll be enough. Oh, my God. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Um, and then it, Lee needs to reload this round, and then Kesa yeah. and Nina are going to fire off. Come on. Ooh, not a three. No, no. Ugh. Rough rolls. Uh, what are they at? Uh, ten and four. Yeah, unfortunately, that's not. those aren't going to land. Mm -hmm. um, but that <laughs> means there are um, two crossbowmen and two archers left, um, and those five footmen still defending. Mm. Uh, I believe that is your turn, though. It is. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, um... I'm going to say, um, oh yeah, here we go. Um, Alan says, sir, do you want me to, do you want me to protect Naomi? Um, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, go on, go for it. Okay, so he's going to, he's going to screen, he's going to screen for, uh, for Naomi. Yep. Um, uh, Cool. Okay. So yeah. So um, Alan Alan breaks off from you uh, and the group and runs in front of Naomi after she fires the shot and holds his shield up. Um, okay. Um, and then they are going to keep using total defense. Um, and then those four are going to go uh, the the ranged guys. Um, so we'll say. Ooh, who are they going to go for? Um, I'm gonna say um, 
two are going to aim at Lee because she's sort of down with her feet, like with uh, pulling up the like the bolt onto her crossbow. So they see her yep. as sort of exposed. Uh, and the other two are going to fire off and try to hit Naomi. Um, so this is the ones on Lee. Okay. Um, only one is going to hit, I believe. Let me just see Lee's AC. Lee's AC is 13. Um, okay. Um, that's the crossbow shot. Okay. Lee is still alive, but you just take a bolt right to the chest. Uh, and you yep. do hear sort of grunt a bit um, from that shot. Uh, but she gets her she gets her thing reloaded. Okay. And then the other two are going to have to um, make checks to see if they can actually... Oh, no. No. Okay, they're both going to fire on Alan, who has a much better AC than Naomi. Um, let's see, I guess this will... Post skill check, okay. Uh, one second here. Um, Sorry, this is just a bunch of different things. <laughs> I know, I'm just a hundred things are going through my head here. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, this will just be stab. Oh god, yeah, no, he, uh... yeah, he yeah he beats he beats both of them. Uh, so they're gonna fire on him. No, not even close. They they both both uh, shots go straight to his straight to his shield. Um, and he's able to protect Naomi there after she fires off her shot. Um, okay, back to you. Oh, uh, and also on their turn, um, the guys inside have cut their way through the web. Uh, next turn, the rest who are inside will filter out. Yep, okay. Um, hmm. Um, and from your guess, we could tell from inside there's probably at least, uh, eight people inside, if not more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a perfect yeah to that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, we need to run away. <laughs> Damn it! I mean, y you might you might have a chance. Who knows? It's uh, no, it's no, pretty it's pretty rough though. It is pretty rough. <laughs> we we really don't. Um. Oh shit! Right, cool. So we're gonna need to. I'm, I'm going to oh. say this right now. It's your turn. You're far enough away, and you guys have horses. Uh, you mm. guys will be able to get on your horses and just book it out of here. You are, you're you not within the temple where you don't have horses or anything like that. You can easily leave here. Yeah, we're going to have to do that, clearly. We're, we're going to die. <laughs> 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 We've used all the good spells, and... yeah, You still got a magic mm. missile. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I was contemplating is whether there was something we could do with fly, but I don't think there's too many of them for that to work, so... Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. Oh, shit, right, come on on the horses! <laughs> run away, run away! Run away. <laughs> yeah, so everybody really books it. Um, uh, Elmo sort of brings the horses over towards um, towards uh, um, Naomi and Alan. The rest get onto their horses. Everybody jumps on for their actions and then runs off uh, through, past the trees, past the north side of the... Uh, of the temple, and you guys head off of this uh, this map. Um, yeah. Leaving them far behind. They don't even try and keep up chase. You guys are already booking it before they have a chance. Um, and you guys are able to find yourselves now in the trees. Um, Tim says, this cowardice will not be forgotten. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and you uh, you guys find yourselves uh, in the in the trees just outside the temple, like probably just like 20 mm. minutes away. Uh, finally have sort of calmed down. Everybody's drunk some water, eating some food. Um... And uh, Elmo just sort of chuckling me like, oh, that was a that was a close one, boss." Yeah, I mean, what? I I don't know. I mean, a guard tower. What do you think? Maybe two or three people in there. You know, maybe to sound the alarm, get some more troops, that sort of thing. But um, I don't know. I counted what eight footmen, eight archers. I think in total, yeah, eight wasn't it? And there were some more inside. I mean, what have you ever seen anything like that? No, that was uh. That was uh, that was quite the surprise, but uh, 
Oh, I mean, yeah. Naomi here, he sort of uh, slaps her back, did a pretty good job. And, like, Naomi's, like, about like about to put food in her mouth. And as he slaps her, like, it falls out of her hands onto the ground. And she just looks up at him kind of angrily. Um, and and uh, he's just like, well, I mean, perhaps we could try again later. I don't know. I mean, I, I think I think we had them on the ropes there. I, I, I believe in us. We, we were doing pretty good. Uh, yeah, well... I'm not entirely sure I agree with you there, uh, Elmo. Yeah, the, but, um... the group seems kind of divided on <laughs> Elmo's uh, sudden sort of confidence in in your in everybody's abilities. Because yeah. uh... <laughs> <laughs> shit. Um. Hmm. Well, let's hope we don't have to go into the temple through that tower because we we've got a problem if we have. Um, <laughs> hmm. Griff Griff's thinking to himself. He's chewing away on something, and he's. He's thinking, can we can we block the door? Is there any maybe we can catch you know set the tower on fire or yeah? <laughs> what do we remember of the top of the tower from? from so uh, the tower is a three story tall tower, um, but the two yeah. first stories are collapsed inwards. So okay. it's probably just it's basically just a one story stone fort with one entrance. It's and you know operated by a group that obviously knows what they're doing. So it looks yeah. like it's probably. A very hard thing to siege. <laughs> so, in terms of sort of windows on the top floor, is there like a hole in the roof or a, a, a window, or are they just sort of arrow slits? What's what's going on uh, on the roof? Uh, well, just so if the first two stories have collapsed, is there like mm. a third story that's still in one piece? No, no, no. It's it's just ah, it's just okay. the first floor left. Basically, everything sort of just right, collapsed inwards. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Um, so is there is there a window in the as as the you go up the stories as they would have been? Is there like a window at the top? No, no, it's it's all no, rubble okay. basically. It really looks right. like they've only made sure the only entrance is through oh, the door. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Difficult to picture, but no, I think I've I've got it. Yeah, yeah. that's a shame. Um, so it's basically like a little fortified man. Yeah, of, it's basically a one-story yeah. stone building with a bunch of yeah. stone on top of it. Like okay. a like a weird <laughs> a weird gross stone Sunday. That's about it. Yeah. Hmm. Well. Oh, you know what? I think we should check out Nob and see if um. Yeah. See if we can find somewhere to put our head down. What do you reckon? <laughs> uh, Elmo. Elmo. That kind of uh, grimaces. He's like, "You want to go to Nob, sir?" Well, not really, but. I mean, I figure these guys have got to get stuff to eat and, you know, all the rest of it. I mean, they're not going to grow anything in that temple, are they? In fact, there's nothing really growing around it anyway. The manky old trees and some... Oh, I don't know. Hmm. Oh, I, I mean, if I had to they... guess, they probably have enough, you know, rations there to last them a while. If, uh, judging judging by their, their tactics and everything else, they seem to be pretty well prepared for anything that was coming out that tower. Yeah, but there, there must be people going to Nob now and again, don't you reckon? Yeah, if you want to, sir. Be. Yeah, yeah. Let's um. How how long is it back to Homlet? Uh, about, about half, half a day. day. Mm. Yeah, uh, so Norba's about fifteen minutes away. Actually, less than that because you moved you moved through the trees. So it's probably about five yeah. minutes away. Well, look, I'll tell you what, Elmo. Why don't we just go in? Um, see if we can get the long of the land, and then we'll we'll head on back to Homlet. Then we won't stay over. How about that? That works for me, sir. I'm uh I'm all too happy not to stay in Nob. Yeah, it was a smelly old place, wasn't it? But, um, <laughs> right, okay. Um, so, so we, uh, yeah, sorry, go hopefully ahead. We, 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 hopefully we've still got some rats with us. There must still be um, two on the back of one of the horses, I reckon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you want to do with those, Bart? <laughs> no idea at the minute, but we'll keep... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they'll come in handy. Um, so we will. I don't believe nobody wanted to buy a dead rat. It's it's terrible. I mean, what's the what's the place come to? Um, <laughs> uh. Killing a poor old lonely rat. So, um, we'll we'll head into Nob, um, and we're going to be very very careful to to keep a good eye on what's around us, and and also for any sort of interesting places. So we think we spotted where the the sort of town tavern probably was. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just see if there's any other sort of outposts, shops, and, and that sort of stuff that might be interesting. Sounds good. Um, all right. Yeah, so... Um, you head over to, to Nolb. Um, and as before, it's a very sort of small town. Uh, more shacks 
than a town, really. Um, there's nowhere that seems to be dry. Everything's just moist. The ground squishes beneath your horse's feet, or hooves, rather. Um, and you make your way over towards uh, the Boatman's Tavern, uh, which looks like it's a repurposed old um, uh, warehouse, probably for boats when this place probably had more money. Um, and now it is just a drinking hole. Um, and as you're passing by, uh, as before, people are staring at you. Um, you're yeah. getting a few looks here and there. Some people are chuckling as, as they you know, say things about you. Um, and you guys uh, head towards the, the, the Boatman's Tavern. Um, Elmo says, I'm going to be honest, sir, I don't really want to split up, but we're going to want to leave people with the horses. We don't want to leave them unattended out here. Well, yeah, why don't we just leave the horses and a few outside then, and we can go in for a, a little chat with the locals. Works for me. Um, is there anybody in particular you want put out there, or do you want Elmo to deal with it? Uh, I'm going to let Elmo deal with it. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, um, he just assigns um, Berg, Lee, Kesa, and Nina to you stay there. Um, and he sort of makes sure that, you know, um, he also leaves Bari out there as well. And so it's just, it's going to be you, Alan, uh, Naomi, um, who are going to be yep. going inside. And Elmo. I was going to say, if anyone dies, then it's not my fault, really. It's, it's yours. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you uh, you head inside. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's a pretty, pretty run down place. You know, the beckoning bench, you know, is not the nicest place I've ever been to, but at least it has a sort of cozy, nice wood paneling feel to it. It feels like a place you actually want to stop in. Um, yeah. this place, you can see the floorboards creak underneath your feet. You can see the mold and moss sort of cr uh, going up the side of the building. Um, you're seeing people sort of passed out next to the building inside on tables. It is a very, very not nice place to be. Um, and uh, you see what looks like the bartender behind behind the bar um, just sort of uh, having a few beers himself. Um, and uh, yeah, what do you want to do, Martin? Oh, I guess if everyone's passed out and drunk, they're not very dangerous. So that's a good start. That's well, for the ones start. that are passed out, there's still people who aren't passed out, I will say that. Yeah. <laughs> you you are seeing <laughs> ne'er-do-wells in the corners, drinking, chatting, mm. conspiring. Um, some look up at you. Nobody talks to you, but you do feel many, many eyes on you right yes. now. Yes. <laughs> you stand out like a sore thumb. So Griff will go up to the bar. What do you want? Um, oh, I'll grab a, oh, a couple of points. They just points to the party, the, the ones that are here. Uh, points of um, your finest hour, if I can, sir. All right. Uh, that'll be two silver a drink. Um, how okay. many drinks? Is that a, how many drinks is that? Five? Uh, I think so, yeah. All right. Uh, so it's me, Elmo, Naomi, Alan. Yeah. Is that another? Uh, yeah. Four. It's it's Elmo, Elmo, Alan, Naomi, and you. So four. Yeah. Four. Um, yeah. yeah so cool. he uh, he puts down four kind of uh, smeared and half cracked glasses on the on the table in front of you and pours up a dark liquid into each each of them and shoves it towards you. And he's like, anything else? Um. No, that'll do fine. Thank you for now. Good. Um. Yeah, it's a, a not 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 a bad place you got here. This place sucks. I hate it. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just being polite. You understand? <laughs> but, um, yeah. Well, what, what, why are you still here then? I got nowhere else to go. Yeah, it's here, or, you know, at the end of a gallows. So I'll take here, yeah. and he just uh, shoots back a drink. Uh, he'll toss a couple of silver over the... Yeah, you can uh, have one of me there. Yeah, he takes it and uh, puts it into his apron. And he sort of looks at you kind of um, expectantly. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I'm... I mean, there's plenty of work right in the place. Isn't it? You don't have to um, keep bar. Oh, yeah, the temple's iron, isn't it? Are you my hiring agent? Do you well, have questions for me, or do you... Uh... For a small fee, I can be, but it was just a polite <laughs> conversation, you understand? Yeah, he just sort of grumbles and takes another drink uh, from uh, from it, and just uncorks another bottle and pours up another glass for himself. Well, yeah. Um, do you get many people from the temple around this way, or...? 
Not not really. Yeah, uh, from the temple. I mean, nobody uh, nobody comes out here saying they're from there, but uh, I'm sure there's somebody, some people who come by who go through there and back. Most people I get are from off the river. Right. I mean, where, I mean, how far how far do they come? Do they come from the north or the south? Which which you know? All across. I mean, the river mostly. Uh, they mostly come from the north for the most part. Right. Oh, are they traders or? Uh... Yeah, they don't really say what they're doing, but uh, you know, I also look at their way when they unload their cargo. So, what does that tell you? Right. Yeah, I kind of get what you mean. Kind of get what you mean. Um. Well. And Griff's trying to get. I suppose he's got an idea that this guy's not really interested in talking to him. Um, no, I mean, you throw some more silver across depending on what questions you have. He's more just, like, yeah. definitely not in the mood for small talk with you. It's mostly the vibe you're getting from him, I'd say. But uh, So Griff, in a very subtle way, then, is going to gonna get his little coin purse out from, you know, uh, under his tunic and, mm-hmm. I don't know, not not slam it on the bar, but just sort of casually put it down like he's wanting to unload and unburden his belt. And... Uh, yeah, he's gonna just I don't know, as as he do, sort of play with a couple of coins in his hand and that sort of thing and say, Well, you know Yeah, river people, hey, temp temple people, are you sure sure there's nobody? You know, I mean you must hear and see everything here. Oh, I would imagine anyone that comes through Nolb stops here. I mean we did, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he uh he scoops up the coin, uh, just basically as solely as you did, and before you see glint for a second in his hand before it's already in his pouch or already in his mm. apron. Um, he says, well, you know, my memory's coming back to me a bit now. Um, you know, every once in a while, there's a few people that come into town, you know, uh, go around, look for some people coming off of ships, people who look like they can, uh, handle a fight, get recruited. And, uh, well, I don't see them in town again after that. I do see a bit of gold and silver change hands and, uh, then they're, uh, gone off to the east. That's interesting. I mean... You say you don't see him again. You um, so it's just sort of a bit of a one-way thing. People come in, never come out. Well, every once in a while, there might be somebody who comes in here and there, and they're you know not so much different, but they seem uh, you know a little bit more flush, a little uh, nicer armor here and there, uh, you know weird yeah. symbols that sort of thing that they're hiding. But overall, uh, well, he's sort of lowering his voice as he's saying this sort of thing. But uh, yeah, he says, yeah, no, uh, they go off, and uh, you know, I guess got some. Other gainful employment. So, what do you think? I mean, you obviously see a fair share of people here. Um, professional, semi-professional, bit amateurish. Well, what, what do you reckon? I mean, it depends who you talk to. Some, uh, some could kill you easily. Others, uh, well, they're, uh, you know, hmm. a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, people don't come here have choice. Many people are here because there's not many uh, places left for them to go. So you know, you... if it was. If it was me, and he, he takes another coin out of his little thing and starts rolling it around the, the bar again. Mm-hmm. You know what? If it was me, and I had a, a temple of my own, um, I'd probably keep somebody, I don't know, handy. You know, eyes and ears. Just to keep an eye out for me. Give me a bit of uh, warning of, of any impending trouble. That's the sort of thing I'd do. Well, I mean, I'm sure you would the same. It's a sensible thing to do. I mean, would you, you know of anyone like that here? Uh, he he leans in, um, and he says, uh, "Yeah, I might know somebody. Um, you know, um, depends on how much uh, this hypothetical person would be willing to pay." I don't know. I mean, I... <laughs> how does uh, you know? Perhaps somewhere in the uh, ballpark of uh, two hundred silver a month. Ah, uh, that's I pretty. Think you're Wrong end of the stick. I'm, I'm, I'm just curious as to whether there might be someone from the temple here. Hmm. Would you know who that would be? I'm sure there is somebody, and you must know. You know, people that stay maybe don't get as drunk as they should. Professional looking, you know, meet many people but haven't got many friends. That kind of thing. Ah, uh, let's see here. Hopefully there is. <laughs> hmm. Well, he says. Uh, he says I don't necessarily know anybody in town who uh, you know would work in that area. 
Uh, but mm. I do know one man who does do dealings with lots of people. A guy by the name of Tolub in town. He uh, he runs quite a few different. Uh, well, let's say um, you'll say he uh he runs a big crew of people who um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, reacquisition uh supplies. Um, and he's often approached for uh you know, uh contracts and that sort of thing. Sends out men, oh. that sort of thing. But uh, okay, yeah, okay. And um, where might I find this Tolub? Um, Tolub. Um, we need a map he, with numbers again. <laughs> yeah, uh, he says down. He's he says he uh, he leans in. Uh, he takes that coin that you're sort of rolling in your hand. He says, mm -hmm. "Listen, I'm just gonna say this since uh, you know you're already seeming to be a bit of a lucrative person. I would not approach Tolub if I were you." Um, he's not exactly a man of, uh, he's a man of a bit of a quick temper, but if you are going to go against what I say here and you're going to look for him anyway, he's over here in the docks. Um, he usually doesn't have less than about 40 men around him, so. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, he gives you a little wink. He says, uh, and besides, you know, if, uh, you seem to be somebody you could give more information to as time goes on, so I'd rather not see you get killed right away, and they'll, and they'll slit your throat and dump you in the river like it's nothing. Right. Yeah, I'm not um, entirely convinced we could deal with 40 people. Ah, never mind. Never mind. Well, um, nice to make your acquaintance, and um, he rolls another silver piece across. If um, if you could keep your eyes and ears out, I'll be back again, and, uh, you know, I'll pay for what it's worth, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he just gives you a quick nod. Um and uh, just goes back to sort of taking more drinks. You kind of notice that Alan's about to take a drink from like one of these dirty glasses. You immediately see Elmo just sort of grabs his hand and just gives <laughs> a little shake and puts it back down. Uh, Naomi has already been off the bar, not even close to the conversation or the drink, kind of just keeping an eye out. Yeah. Right, come on then, guys. I think it's time we um, we head back. Yep, and uh, you guys you guys head out. Um and, uh, yeah, you, you see the group there on the horses. Uh, they seem to be, it looks like there's enough of the, of your group that's outside that it seems like nobody's approached them or tried to do anything. But you do notice yeah. quite a few different groups sort of around, kind of giving looks over towards you guys. People just drinking outside, people milling about, lots of loitering. Um, it does look like the sun is starting to set soon. Um, mm -hmm. So it's probably best to get out of town before it's dark. Yep. And um, we will do just that. Sounds good. Yep. So, Ooh. um, <laughs> you guys, you, you're heading back to Hamlet, huh? Yeah. All right. Oh, man, I don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any bad numbers in there? No, you're all good. Uh, you head back down <laughs> to Hamlet. Uh, you go, you guys ride through the darkness. Um, you feel every once in a while that you know you only see eyes in the darkness in the trees. You feel like you hear howls in the wind, um, but you are able to make it back to Hamlet quite late. Um, part of you feels now more relaxed now that you're back here. Um, not that Hamlet is necessarily a very welcoming place, but at least it's not Nulb or the Temple. Um, mm. and your group, uh, gives you a sort of nod and they're like, after riding and all the fighting, uh, they're all ready to go to bed. Yep. And, they, oh, uh, yeah. Thank you, gang. That was, uh, a good day's work. Not what I expected, but, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, they head off. Um, is there anything you want to do in town? There's, it seems like everything's pretty closed up right now. Yeah. So I think, um... I think Griff will go and and turn in and reflect on what's happened. But uh, yeah, um, and when he does, he's still got this kind of nervous feeling that somebody's following him. So he's going to do the uh, put the chair in front of the window and put some noisy stuff on it and, uh, and make a good job of propping the door up and that kind of thing. If somebody does come in, he's got a um, hopefully a little bit more warning than he would have otherwise. Sounds good. Do you want to give me a nose check? Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Okay, ah, did you want no. to re-roll that? Or? I was going to say, as an expert, I think he can re-roll that, can't he? <laughs> <laughs> Might be a good thing. 
Okay, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, so you're you're just getting yourself ready for bed. You're doing your now your new ritual, sort of setting up little traps here and there in case yep. somebody just come in. <laughs> um, and as you're doing that, just all on the window sill, you look out the window um, and you see out the back uh, towards um, just sort of like the the sort of muddy road behind the tavern. Um, you see what looks like sort of five figures standing stock still, looking straight up at you. Um, their faces are covered by their black cloaks. Um, and they're just not moving, and you see all five of them just staring at you. You see a little bit of glint in the moonlight that there is something around their necks, um, and when you sort of blink for a second and look again, uh, they are gone. <laughs> um, so I like to think that Griff probably wasn't actively looking and staring at them, but just kind of glanced in their direction not really seeing them or at least that's what yeah you saw saw a sort of saw yeah. them and a bit of a double take and then when you did the double take it was like they were gone <laughs> um so he's gonna do the obvious and uh yeah see if he can get some who else is staying in the tavern um i think uh naomi is staying in the tavern um yeah and i believe uh yeah naomi Kesa, and nina are all staying in the tavern um, Lee, Berg, Bari, Alan, and Elmo are all from town, so they're staying in their respective homes. Yeah. So, uh, Griff will wake them up. Okay. Uh, the, the ones in the tavern? Mm, yep. Yep, so you wake them up, and, uh, Naomi's like, oh, what is it, boss? What's going on? Oh, I'm really sorry. Look, I, um, there was five of those, I'm gonna call them Nolbians, hanging around outside. <laughs> um, you know, the ones with the amulets and the, yeah. Um... I mean, they're probably after me, but none of us are safe, really. So I think we should round up the others and just make sure everyone's okay and they're not picking everybody off one by one. Uh, okay, sounds sounds good, sir. Um, Get yourself ready. Yep, and she, like, still sort of, like, in uh, in pajamas, just goes over, grabs her gear, throws her backpack on, um, and then you go get Kesa and Nina. They're similarly yeah. confused in the get-up. Um and yeah, you um you make your way around town to the different people, um just waking them up, seeing that they're all right, everything's going good. Um you go through basically all of them. Um and uh, everybody seems fine. Well, mate, I think it might be a good idea if we all stayed in the same place and took watch. What do you reckon? Is there anywhere around here we can um shack up? Um he says uh hmm, I mean Oh, it's hard to say, boss. Uh, I guess maybe the church. We could maybe see if uh, yeah. for a small donation, if they'll uh, stay there for the night. I think that's a good idea, don't you? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, probably their best chance. A lot of the other homes are too small for all of us. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, yeah, well, well I, hopefully I'll be able to build one and, um, you know, I'll be able to entertain a, a larger group of people than this. But, um, yeah, for the time being, let's let's head to the church. Sounds good. Um, what's the name of the church guy again? I for uh... Uh, Turgeon. Turgeon. Um, yeah. yeah, so uh, you guys get up there, um, and you're able to wake up Turgeon, who's just, like, uh, still rubbing the sleep out of his eyes, and he's just like, uh, what, what, what's going on, Griff? Is, there, is everything going okay? Somebody uh, somebody hurt? We, we saw some, I don't know, five people from the temple were um, outside my window, and... I don't know. I don't want to bring trouble to um, to people, so I thought if I bring everybody here instead, and we can take watch, then then everyone will be safe. You, you wouldn't mind helping us, eh? Would you? Uh, he sort of pauses for a second. And he says, uh, "Well, I can't make it a regular thing, but yeah, you can stay. You can sleep on the pews, but I need you yeah. out by five in the morning before the first service." Yep, sounds reasonable. Thank you very much. And he drops five silver pieces by way of a donation into uh, Turgeon's hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, yep. He takes it. Um, and uh, he thanks you. He, you see, you get you get the feeling that he wasn't going to ask for it anyway, but mm -hmm. he appreciates the the offering. He goes and puts it in the box, and uh, yeah. he just points out to where you guys can sleep, and then he sort of goes back to his quarters. Um, oh, I'm sorry, guys. I know it's uncomfortable, but you know, better safe than uh, an arrow in your back, as they say. Uh, yeah, and, and Alan's just like, well, I mean, I, I like sleepovers, sir, so I don't mind. Um, and he goes onto the bench and just uh, starts to lay down, um, and everybody gets. You know, they all you guys all sort of decide what what watches are gonna yeah. be what. Um but overall it's a very quiet night, Martin. You guys sort of stay up there. Uh the sun finally comes up, uh the the roosters uh crow, and then uh you guys get up before people start streaming in for the first service. Cool. Right. So 
Um, Griff's wondering whether he can get away with getting in the temple without actually having to deal with all these people in the tower. Mm -hmm. He's hoping that would be possible. So. I mean, the I will say the tower. The yeah. tower is extremely far from the entrance. It's it's yeah. like um, I think about eight hundred feet away, basically. So. Yeah, you, you could you probably get there without them noticing. Yeah. <laughs> Problem. He's also wondering why on earth there's a, a, a three-story tower that's collapsed into one story with a bunch of really well-organized people in it <laughs> just to the northeast of the temple. Yeah. Is, yeah, there's something going on there and he's not quite sure what it is. <laughs> Bothering the hell out of him. <laughs> um. So... Griff is going to uh, try and buy some extra supplies of, of things. So maybe a few more um, bits of rope, some fishing wire, mm -hmm. um, bit of oil, that kind of good stuff yep. from the trading post. So, yeah, you're able to get, get all that stuff. Yeah. Um, maybe get some extra torches, that sort of thing. We'll do all the yeah. calculations uh, later on. But yeah, you're able to get all that sort of stuff. A few extra um, rations because we kind of use some of them for the rats and that sort of stuff. Yeah. So yeah, we'll, we'll stock up on some, some good things. Um... And I think we're going to go and pay... Uh, let's pay Jeru a visit. And mm -hmm. uh, we need to try and stock Naomi up on some spells, I think. Okay. Yep, absolutely. Um, I, that was yesterday, so the, the chance of getting any spells is probably low, at least from uh, the wizard. But um, yeah. the druid might have something, potentially. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's... Yep. Yeah. Let's say hello to Jeru. Jeru the druid. Yeah, you head down. Um, it looks like Jeru uh, is in the is in the middle of a seminar, um, just sort of talking to the acolytes, showing them certain things. You see them doing like weird little spells here and there, as well as them teaching some healing stuff. Um, you sort of just wait patiently for him to be done, and then he uh, is finally finishes up. Sends sends them on their way to go do some tasks around the around the grove, and then he turns to you and says, "Oh, um, what can I do for you, Griff?" Oh, good morning, my good man. Um, that's a very pleasant day, isn't it? Whether or not Emily could be peeing it down the rain. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't. And he, he scratches, but I don't, I don't know if you can you can help me out. But um, we, we had a little bit of trouble at the temple. There was um, you wouldn't believe it. Like sixteen armed people that just just came out, and there were there were more in there. Um, I I don't know if you could help us out with some spells at all. Naomi is um pretty good with that kind of stuff I, I didn't know if you might have anything that might be able to i don't know help us in in some way um let's see here uh he says uh i might have a thing or two um he just brings oh. you over towards a uh, building and he goes through stuff um i did have a few things here and there um hmm well he, he, you see him sort of parse through a few different things, and he takes out what looks like different like pieces of bark that have been sort of carved into, yeah. um, and he <laughs> rolls them up. Um, and he says, uh, well, I don't have anything necessarily that would be super helpful to you, but I I do have this slow poison scroll, um, and I also have this create water scroll, but uh, that's currently all I have on hand, if I'm being honest with you. I don't really okay. keep scrolls around. A lot of the spells I do are just uh, from me and from, from the earth around the grove. Oh, that makes sense. I mean, uh, oh, I'm sure they'd be very useful. Um, how much water does create water create exactly? Is it like a a little flask or, I don't know, a lake? Let's see here. Page 8. Create water. Uh, <laughs> uh, 50 gallons of water. Quite a lot. Stay in 12 humans and 12 mounts for one day. Yeah. 50 gallons is a reasonable amount, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Enough to waterboard a bandit. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now we get into the war crimes section of the uh, the campaign. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. If, I mean, fifty gallons. So f a gallon is four and a half liters. So f uh, fuck it. Let's just say it's about two hundred and twenty-five mm -hmm. um, liters. So that's almost a quarter of a ton of water. So if you were to drop that, like on a an old abandoned building <laughs> or something, with is is it going to cave the whole thing in? That's the question. <laughs> 101 uses for spells that were never intended. <laughs> <laughs> that is fun. Um, actually, no, because here's the way it works. The spell causes a magical spring to gush forth from the ground. Oh, okay. So that's the only problem is that it, it's it's uh, 
Yeah, I like yeah. I like your idea though. I think that's pretty fun <laughs> if you're able to manipulate it. But unfortunately, yeah, this is the way this is a very classic spell compared to maybe some other yes. stuff that you might be able to find. Yeah. But, yeah. No, that's um, so cool. But uh, he says, well, I mean, you did me a favor the other day. I, I don't mind giving this to you free of charge um, to help oh. you with your... Obviously, we are we are sort of, you know, aligned in our goals of dealing with what's going on in the in the, in the the region, so I don't oh, mind absolutely. parting with these. Oh, oh, thank you very much. I mean, um, hopefully we can repay the favor, and uh, I shall bring you some, well, I don't know, um, druidic artifact if I find one for you. <laughs> That'd be fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Um, so with that, I think we're going to try and head back to the temple. Sounds and, good. And uh, we're going to very much stick to the south. So we're not going to be not going to be going north to that that line of trees at all. Pretty pretty dangerous up the willow. Yep. Sounds any, good. Any scary numbers? Are we we good? No, no, we're all good. No, <laughs> don't you worry. Um, so yeah. So you're are you are you heading? Sorry, did you say you're heading back the same way you guys went the first time, or are you going to go through Nolb? Yeah, I think we're going to miss no, but I think all we're going to do is pick up something that's going to follow us, which is probably not what we want. Sounds Ooh. good. Yeah. And the other thing is, when we were down in the moat house, we picked up ten cloaks with eyes on, didn't mm-hmm. we? Yep, and there's many so, more there. Yeah. I, mean, I guess you can get to them now. It's in position of sight field, yeah. so we might have to deal with them. Yeah, well, we've got ten and we've got nine people, so I reckon we're, we're okay at the minute. Yep. Um, so we shall head back to the temple and uh, rock up towards the front door. Now, the way we'll do this is... Obviously, after our last uh, uh, problem, we will completely skip the north. We'll head straight round the south of the temple, and we'll very quietly tie the horses up just south of the broken wall mm-hmm. um, at a convenient tree, and head on very, very, very carefully to the temple door. Sounds good. Yeah. So um, you guys are able to go through. Um, your rope is still there. Uh, thankfully, the one that you have a- attached across the river, you guys are able to use that okay. to bring yourself across. Uh, you guys don't encounter anything this time, thankfully. Um, and you make your way across it and then through. Uh, and then you are now in front of the temple here. Um, and in front of these doors, like I said, they're about 40 feet across. <laughs> um, yep. But they are still <laughs> wide open. So Griff will say, well... I'm going to have a quick look in here, and he's going to don his cloak of elven kind. Mm-hmm. Um, and just just sneak in, just to see what he can see. Okay. Uh, um... Keeping his wits about him, so he's going to, as he's going through these doors, he's going to look up, make sure there's not like a pile of rocks on a rope or anything like that. Okay. Um, so, uh, you uh, go into that sort of first area there, right? Um, and you see... Um... There's a bunch of, like, tables, benches, chairs, and stools. Um, there looks like uh, heaps of old blankets and brown cloaks lie by the walls, and several sacks near them are filled with foodstuffs. Uh, you yep. see a bunch of, like, empty wine bottles on the tables, uh, knuckle bones, dirty plates and mugs, and nothing else, really. So he's gonna... So there's no one here. It's completely... Nope, not, not that you can okay. see. Uh, they're all in the tower. That's the problem. Um... So he's going to take a look at the food and the wine. Um, and you know, if you leave like a wine glass overnight, um, you kind of lose the moisture and it all crusts up and you just get this kind of red red stuff on the on the, the, the glass. So he's going to look for um, any signs of, you know, whether this has been here for, you know, just a couple of hours, a couple of days, maybe longer. Mm-hmm. Uh, it looks like it's probably the last few days, uh, last in the last okay. week or so. So... There's a good chance these people aren't here then. That's no, straight. Not, not, not that you not can right tell. Here. No. Yeah. Mm, okay. Um, so he's just going to have a. Yeah, go ahead. He's just going to have a quick look around. He's, he's yeah, just slowly building up confidence, moving sort of deeper and deeper in, sort of keeping an eye on where he's come from to make sure he can still get out. But. Um, yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, so if you move forward a little bit there um, yeah. into the temple. Um, this sort of area now that you can see a little bit more in this room outside of like the benches and everything else is that this yep. looks like there's like a bunch of beds in here, about five of them. Uh, they contain a round table, three stools, chest of drawers with a lantern on top of it. Um, and that sort of thing just in this area. Um, it looks like some sort of quarters for somebody. It's a funny thing, isn't it? You go through a temple double door and all of a sudden you've got sort of a dining room bedroom kind of effect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's also a padlocked iron-bound oak chest in this room as well. 
And where are the exits? So if he looks around, um, I'm assuming he can see all the walls, or is it too dark for that? Um, uh, what do you mean, like around this this room? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can move. Just... Yeah, if you want to move around this room, you can. You can move your character around so okay. you can actually see it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, this is this is you sort of uh, searching it. Yeah. Yeah. So he's he's doing this really carefully because the last thing he wants to do is to I don't know walk into mm -hmm. a little bed with uh, someone sleeping in it or something. So sounds good. And, and there's, he can't hear any noise. Uh, no, no noise. No, that's good. So, um. So one thing though that you notice here now that now that you moved up a little bit here into this little mm -hmm. area, um, you see on these pillars, um, what looks like, um. On this pillar to your left, on this pillar yep. to your right, and this pillar to your right further up. Um, oh, I, I probably can't see as much of the map as you think. Yeah, I can. no, no, I know. I, I'm more <laughs> just putting it there. Like, if you you can move the character okay. around a little bit as well. Like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Like, yeah, you're in the little, you're in the area where I'll tell you to stop if uh, you're going too far. Yeah, but yeah. Um, but yeah so basically, that whole area you see. Um, uh, on those bodies, or sorry, on those pillars are bodies. <laughs> um, you see, um, one the strong on the left here looks like um, a half elf. Um, the one on the right looks like a dwarf, and the one f uh, to the f to the front uh, it looks like a human. Um, they look like completely naked. Um, it looks like I won't go into detail, but it looks like horrible things have happened to their bodies um, before they were strung up. They look like they were tortured. Um, and, uh, they've been stripped of all, uh, clothes, uh, and anything mm. else they might have had on them. And they look pretty fresh, probably the last few weeks, maybe, maybe uh, a week and a half ago or so. Yeah. Where's this, uh, where's this chest then? Uh, this chest is in the room behind you in this, uh. uh okay. Yeah. So that's, that's around there. Yeah. Is that a window, that one? That's a door. That's a door. Okay. Come on, Griff. We'll keep that closed. I didn't mean to click on that. Uh, cool. So Griff will, will have a look at the chest. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. It looks like it's locked with a big padlock. Um, so if he can get it off quietly, he's going to give that a go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there doesn't seem to be... Uh, well, let's, let's see here. Uh, okay. Doesn't seem there seem to be there's any danger. Uh, so if you want to give me a sneak check to do it, uh, do it quietly. Um, yep. I will make you roll to open it because you are efficient enough at rolling. Yeah. So you're pretty sneaky in terms of you trying to draw attention. Um, it takes you a little while. It takes you about maybe 15 minutes of, of fiddling with this padlock. It's pretty tough. Um, but you finally get the pins peeled back, um, and it yep. springs open, um, and you're able to take the padlock off this chest. Griff's a little bit paranoid about this place, so he's going to open the chest from the side. Yeah. Uh, you open it up, um, and it looks uh, like nothing happens, um, but okay, it does look good. like it's filled with stuff inside. Oh, so what have we got? So, um, you find... Oh, God. Um, so, first you find um, a potion of healing. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. Um, you also find um, what looks like a sack filled with coin. Sack of coin, yeah. Um, inside, there's about a thousand silver pieces. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's not okay. it. Um, you also find a nice jeweled dagger. Um, and it looks like it's probably worth about a hundred gold pieces. Okay. Um, and you find four... Uh, sorry, silver pieces. Um, and you find four bolts of silk worth um, 60 silver pieces each. Okay. Griff is, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Griff is really, really on edge at this point. He's thinking he's just walked into a temple. There's a table and stuff with some old crockery and things on. Doesn't look like it's been there for that long, but maybe a few days. There's some dead people hanging from pillars and someone's left a small fortune in a chest. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, and um, <laughs> it's funny you mention that. Um, uh, as you're sort of going through the chest... Um, you guys hear what sounds like the sounds of uh, boots and footsteps coming from outside, um, and you see what looks like about a dozen people turn the corner here, and what looks like the man in sort of plate armor says, uh, ah, look who's back. 
Um, and it looks like you're starting to recognize people who were hurt from the fight from yesterday. Um, and that's where we're going to end off today's session. Oh, no. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> uh. This is a death trap. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is the temple. This is this is this is where shit mm. is just gonna keep getting worse. You are, <laughs> this is <laughs> fighting to survive. Um, but no, great job, Martin. That was, that was really good. Um, I think this will be very interesting. Um, I'm glad to finally get yourselves into the actual temple, even if it was <laughs> the first room, just so I wasn't turned into a liar when I told everybody that uh, <laughs> we will be entering the temple today. I'm right. <laughs> you can't say anything against that. We got inside the temple. Um. But yeah, that's where we're going to end it off today, guys. <laughs> this is going to be a bloodbath. <laughs> yeah, you know, it is it is uh it's going to be rough. It's going to be a rough one. But um I think this will be a very very action heavy series probably from here on out for the most part yeah, as we yeah. go through the temple stuff. <laughs> um but thank you everybody for watching. Uh, this is really fun. We'll be continuing this next Sunday, of course. Um this video or this stream will be going up on the podcast and YouTube in the next day or so for anybody who's shown up late and wants to watch it once I add out some other stuff. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. And thank you uh, to Tim and PT for the reroll or for the, for the bits it is appreciated. Um, I'm sure Marn was very happy to get that. Yes. <laughs> um, oh no, sorry. It wasn't Tim. It was Ori. Ori. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Never mind, Tim, you cheap bastard. No, uh, thank you. Thank you, Ori. Uh, we appreciate you. Um, and I'll I'll carry that over to the next session, just so that it's there. Um, we will need to remember that. I'm sure Ori, who's usually here for every session, will remind us that he uh, he gave yep. us that last time. So we'll try not to forget that you have a, uh, a free reroll next session. But yeah, thanks a lot, guys. Um, and we will see you guys next week. Great stuff. Cheers, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs>